What is up, coordinators and naturals? I am just a simple new type, and in this episode, we are diving into Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Astray. We will look at the two OVAs, as well as look into the first volume of the manga. I am referencing the Tokyo Pop North American publication, and not the original Kodakawa release, which has way better covers. Anyways, let's get into this. Cosmic Era 71, the first alliance plant war. A ship is heading towards Earth for an auction. It consists of Lo, Gu, Kisato Yamabuki, Liam Garfield, and the Professor. On the auction block is a Baku head, and Lo wants it. The TMF TR2 Baku Tactical Recon type is a Baku variant focusing on, you guessed it, recon. It also has cloaking tech similar to the Mirage Colloid tech, but not exactly the same. Lo is a member of the Junk Guild. The Junk Guild is a non-governmental organization. They are essentially contractors that go from job to job salvaging stuff. Thanks to the help of Reverend Malkio, the Junk Guild has a non-aggression treaties with Orb, the Alliance, and Zaft. He is the winner of the bid. He connects it to his mobile suit and tests the Beam Saber to the annoyance of his teammates. They collect some data from the head that goes above their pay grade, but they copy it for safekeeping. It has information on the Sword Calamity. More on that later. While tinkering with the data, the team runs into a gin. Lo gets into his Gundam Astray Red Frame. The MBF P02 Gundam Astray Red Frame is one of the five identical prototypes developed by Orb. When Morganrod and the Alliance work together to create the five G Project Gundams, they essentially stole everything about the designs, with the exception of the phase shift armor. They then created the Astray Project. More on this later. Lo is able to pilot the Red Frame with the help of Eight. Eight is a suitcase shaped AI helping Lo in the battle when piloting Red Frame. Eight has humanity's entire history of warfare. He is able to take out the Baku using his new Baku head, but more enemies are on the way. He is attacked by a Sigu Deep Arms. The YFX 200 Sigu Deep Arms stands for Directional Energy Emissions Experimental. Sigus originally used shell weapons, but after Zaft stole G Project weapons, they developed their own beam tech and used it on the Sigus. It uses a thermal energy cannon, heavy laser sword, and a heavy assault machine gun. He is able to take them out using the Gerbera Strait, which is a simple, giant-ass katana that is really, really sharp. He is picked up and escapes, but he left his Baku on behind in the midst of the battle. Eight tells him that it sucks to be him and keeps moving. The Gundam Astray Blue Frame is piloted by Guy Murakamo and fighting a Guaz. The MBF P03 Gundam Astray Blue Frame has the same loadout as the Red Frame, but no giant katana, and Guy will create what is called the Full Weapon Form, which is just a backpack full of weapons. The ZGMF 600 Guaz or Gates, I'm not sure showed up in Gundam Seed, but we never talked about it. This unit was built by Mayas Military Industries, who will go on to create many melee weapons for the Goof Ignited. Unlike many of the Zaft units for the time, this one actually had head Vulcans. It also utilizes beam technologies, which wasn't its original intention, but after the capture of the Gat Gundams, they said yes to beam tech. Guy is the leader of the mercenary team Serpent's Tail. While his team captures the Jin, they run across Ed the Ripper piloting the Sword Calamity. The Gat X-133 Sword Calamity is a more versatile version of the Calamity that we saw the bio-CPU Orga pilot during the first Alliance Plant War. It is designed for close combat. Edward Harrelson is an ace pilot for the Alliance. His ability to wield the Calamity's knife weapons has earned him the title, Ed the Ripper. Blue and Calamity fight. And that will do it for these OVAs. They kind of just dive you into the story and the characters without any context. So for that, we are going to have to look at Gundam Seed Astray manga. Let's do it. January, CE-71. Guy comes across a Nazca-class ship. It is the Le Creuset team. Rao recognizes that they are mercs. He wants to test Miguel's skill. He goes out to fight Guy. He does not have the blue frame yet. He is currently piloting a Jin. Now remember that Miguel is the first person that died by the hands of Kira, which is the advent of Jesus Yamato's bloodthirst for pacifism. Fun fact that I didn't mention in the first run-through of Gundam Seed, but Miguel's voice actor is Takanori Nishikawa, better known as TM Revolution. He also played Hein in Gundam Seed Destiny. If you were wondering why these characters were introduced and then instantly killed off, because Popstar. 
They both run out of ammo and engage in a melee battle. Guy is able to take out Miguel's arm and Miguel is able to destroy Guy's gin. Guy is able to eject before his unit explodes. Raul calls him back to the ship. If you ever wondered why Miguel used a standard gin during the Battle of Heliopolis, this is why. Psst, nobody cared. Later, both Lo and Guy are assigned to missions at Heliopolis. Guy is assigned to find an astray model while Lo is going junking. The Battle of Heliopolis takes place. Miguel and Rusty die while Kita pilots the strike Gundam. Rusty! Hours after the destruction of Heliopolis, Lo and the Junk Guild make their way through what is considered a gold mine to them. Another junker, Liam, notes that the damage on the colony was caused by an internal explosion. They are all piloting Chimera mobile pods. The Chimera is a variation of the Ma-01 Mistral, which is a general purpose mobile armor. The Chimeras are modified with salvaging and junking in mind. While digging, they stumble upon a gold mobile suit arm. Lo digs and falls through the rubble and stumbles upon two mobile suits, a blue one and a red one. They notice that mercenaries are descending onto their location. The Chimera isn't suitable for fighting, but these new mobile suits are. Lo decides to get into the blue one and tells the team to load the red one. Meanwhile, a Mobius equipped with a Gatlin gun is approaching Lo. He uses the AI-8 to control the unit while he gets out and distracts the Mobius. 8 is able to destroy the Mobius, but the pilot flies out of the cockpit. It is Guy. He points a gun at Lo and tells him his mission is to destroy these units and any witnesses. They scuffle and Guy gets into the blue frame. He throws 8 at Lo before taking off. A bunch of mobile armors come towards home, the Junker's ship. It seems it is Serpent's Tail's employees betraying them. Guy comes out of the colony rubble and assists the team in destroying every Mobius with ease using the blue frame. He sets his eyes on destroying the home, but Lo comes out and defends the ship using the red frame. They decide to talk. It seems that people will be coming for the two units. Lo decides to allow Guy to take the blue frame. Guy accepts it, but says that next time they meet, it may be on the battlefield. Lo understands, and the Serpent's Tail team and the Junker's Guild go on their separate ways. The attack on Artemis takes place. This is when Nicole, using the Blitz Gundam, snuck onto Artemis and destroyed its impenetrable shield. The Junk Guild is on their way to the Artemis rubble. They are worried that pirates have got to the location before them. Lo goes out in the red frame. He sees pirate ships destroyed and wonders what could do this. Suddenly, the blue frame comes out of nowhere. Guy tells Lo that he should leave immediately or he will not hesitate to attack. Suddenly, a rocket comes out of nowhere. Guy contacts General Garcia. Garcia is the commander of the Artemis as we first saw him in episode 6 of Gundam Seed. He was cocky and sure that Artemis would never fall to Zaft. Now that it has, he is doubling down on his arrogance. Garcia hired the Serpent's Tales team, but Guy tells him that these actions make the contract null and void. However, Garcia has Serpent's Tail member Elijah as a prisoner. He tells Guy to capture the Red Frame or Elijah will be killed. He has no choice. Red and Blue engage in battle. The Junk Guild tells Lo that Guy is most likely a coordinator and that Lo doesn't have a chance, but he believes in the power of plot, I mean, the power of luck. Lo gets his ass kicked. He takes Blue Frame's Beam Saber. 8 still has the data that it collected when using the Blue Frame and is able to incorporate its Blue's Beam Saber for Red. But instead of using it on Blue, he takes the Beam Saber and stabs the Artemis Command Center, taking out some of the men. Both Elijah and Garcia survive. Elijah goes in and pulls a gun on Garcia's bald head. Guy thanks the Junkers, and they go their separate ways once again. Lo is happy he was able to keep up with the Coordinator. Guy is meeting with Acteon Industries. They want Guy to steal the Red Frame and all its data, but Guy refuses. He feels that any attempt to attack the Junk Guild simply won't work. This is because even though Lo isn't a pilot, he has a new type-like ability to fix anything he touches and think his way out of situations. As a coordinator, Guy recognizes this and doesn't want to make an attack. He also tries to buy the blue frame, but Guy also says no. So Acteon asks the home if they have any parts they could sell them. Of course it is a trap. They use this opportunity to try to lighten their load. Lo also threatens to get rid of 8 in the process. He goes out in the red frame to drop off the junk along with the chimeras. 
They are, of course, led into a trap and are now stuck in a weapons testing room, so they can't blast their way out. It is now a game of attrition. Lo gets an idea. He decides to take a bunch of energy lines and connect them to his red unit, and it overclocks the beam saber, making it more powerful than Acteon expected. Bust their way out and grab the executive. Lo, being the nice guy that he is, doesn't retaliate. Rather, he just gives him an invoice for the junk and demands payment. Also, just seeing the mobile suit give a man a little piece of paper invoice is, is beautiful. Love it. They take off unharmed and with more cash in their pockets. Meanwhile, Serpent's Tail hears of the junk guild's run-in with Acteon. Guy expected this outcome. He thinks that there is something weird going on and it has to do with the Estrays. And that will do it for this episode. We learn of the origins of the Junk Guild and Serpent's Tale. We also learn of the blue and red frames, but we will learn more about them moving forward. Also, this is the first time that I covered material from a manga, and if you are seeing this, then the Sunrise and Bandai Gods have been kind to me. They weren't kind when I attempted to cover Witch from Mercury. Let me know which Mobile Suit Gundam manga series you would like me to cover. In our next episode, we will talk more about the Gerbera Strait Katana that Lo and the Red Frame will wield. Acteon is still trying to get their hands on the Red Frame, and we will learn of a third Astray unit. But until next time, new types, remember Remember, in the cosmic era, if anything becomes salvaged goods, the rule is apparently first come, first serve. Peace.